Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. It's a big year for the Piper Cub. It's the 75th anniversary of the airplane and the company that built it. And a couple of weeks ago during our Oshkosh coverage, I reported on a very sophisticated J3 simulator from Redbird Simulation. So what's next? A glass panel for a J3? Well, sure enough, and I'm flying one, let's turn the camera around take a look. This is the Dynon D1 pocket panel, which Dynon calls a portable EFIS. Now you know Dynon for its line of EFIS products, including the popular Skyview. Well, they've taken some of that technology and crammed it into the D1. This is a portable battery-operated EFIS that measures three by three and a half inches and about an inch thick. For quite a few years, Garmin has done this sort of thing with purely GPS-driven attitude displays, such as this one on the Era 796. And we're also seeing them on iPads, too. But the D1 is different. It has a MEMS-based attitude sensing system, not just a single accelerometer like some of the iPad systems do. So it senses roll and pitch just like an Anahar system does. Now, Mr. Piper forgot to put an air data computer in the 1938 Cub, so the D1 can't display pedostatic information such as airspeed, altitude, and vertical speed. So for this, Dynon does what Garmin does. It displays GPS altitude, GPS speed, which is really ground speed, and derived vertical speed. That obviously has limitations, but it also simplifies installation. With an internal battery good for four hours of operation, the only external connection is the GPS antenna, and since the D1 also has an internal antenna, you probably don't even need that. There's really not much to the installation here in the Cub. I just use the suction cup Dynon provides to stick it right to the window. You can also mount it in an empty instrument hole. Although I'm running on internal battery power in the Cub, the D1 will also operate on external ship's power if you have it. Mounting the D1 is pretty easy. On a tail dragger on the ground, there's obviously a built-in pitch error, but that's easy to fix by just aligning the horizon indication for pitch and roll with this little rocker switch on the side of the bezel. So how does it work? Pretty well, as you can see here. It might not have the liquid smoothness of a G1000, but then for 1500 bucks, you shouldn't expect it to. It's quite responsive in both roll and pitch, and it shows turn rate down here at the bottom of the display. The rate indicator is a little sensitive, but you don't really need it anyway. Overall, the D1 is a terrific little gadget. So what can you do with the D1? Well, you could Velcro it to the panel of your certified airplane and have a pretty nifty backup for those ancient vacuum gyros. Or you could stick it here in the Cub and go IFR. Of course, you wouldn't do that. You could. Now, don't write me an Aunt Jane letter saying, don't give people ideas. It's my job to give people ideas. And for a good one, check out the October 2012 issue of Aviation Consumer for a full report on the D1. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching. A3 simulator, a very sophisticated digital... Uh, this up.